hope you're going to edit this drastically. Usually Saturday morning, we rehearse every Saturday morning that we have a performance. So at 8.30, which is our call, um, we'll begin the warm up when, and we try to, especially on Saturdays when we have more time, we try to do a nice long warm up to get the brass warmed up for the rest of the day. Uh, we get there at 8.30. I usually get there a little bit earlier because I usually get water on Saturday uh, with Cap Cap Psy for the band. Um, we warm up and usually run through the show a few times. Uh, depending on how that goes, we get to leave or we we'll stay a little bit longer. Uh, it can last anywhere from, well, we've been getting out early the last couple of times. We warm up at about 8.30, the band comes and they do their warm up and the pit kind of stands around and checks our equipment and makes sure everything's working right. And uh, we just could run through the show till about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, just over and over again, trying to get everything perfected. Show up about 8.15, um, warm up, work on some stuff that has some troubles, uh, go to uh, getting ready for coming onto the field set and uh, going through it. A lot of work, a lot of patience. You have to have patience. They're, first, the season are real intense because you're really pushing to get everything clean before you perform that day. And after that, they're kind of, kind of easy going. You know, just go down, and do your job, get the show over with, do a good run through, and go to Southern Barbecue and eat lunch. First off, we always try to start early because, you know, the trumpet section has always got to be one of the best sections. So we start out early. Uh, we usually call 30 minutes for the band call, kind of get together, warm up, wake up, uh, make sure everybody gets there. Sleeping, but you know, you know, you got a job to do. So you come up here and you get your job done, and hopefully you can go home early and get everything accomplished. sit around the track until everyone gets there because people are always late. So we usually start up around 8, 10. And we'll just start warming up. We'll do that probably for 15 minutes. And then we'll start, probably play the cadence a couple of times. And then we'll start on the show music. Saturday morning rehearsals really evolve through the year because you're going to have a certain number of kids who are so happy to be away from mom and dad, they're going to go wild. And Friday night's when they're going to pick to do it. They're going to stay up all night, no telling what they're going to do. And then Saturday morning they're going to be on that field at 8.30 and they're going to be suffering. And, uh, and you, can, you can just tell uh, which ones they are.
And that goes, they, they solve that pretty quick. Usually the second Saturday is not quite as bad. By the third Saturday, they've decided Friday night is when they're just going to watch TV and go to bed. You know, but that's not something they want to mess with. Oh, the band is done because the year before it came here, this one I was in the band, we flew to Texas and did it out there. And it got stomped. 35 to 7 by North Dakota State. And the thing I remember about it is, of course, we got to the airport. We left here like 4 in the morning. Went to Huntsville to the airport. We went out back, and there's a bunch of airplanes, and this girl, a majorette named Jennifer Ludy, said, which one's the majorette plane? <laughs> you, know, you got lineette bus, majorette bus, color guard bus, percussion bus. We thought we had different planes, and she was dead serious. Saturday morning rehearsals are long at the beginning of the year because we're still trying to get that show learned. Uh, and as we go, they get a little shorter because everything becomes more routine and we're so much better at what we're doing. But the thing that's so useful about Saturday morning rehearsals is they, they get the show back on everybody's mind. Because it's natural on a Friday afternoon, it's the weekend, you just let your mind shut down and enjoy yourself and no problem there. Uh, Saturdays really help us get back into the frame of mind we need to be in to do a performance in the afternoon or at night. Uh, they help us a great deal.
and then, you know, you can find problems on Saturday morning. Uh, we found things that we can actually fix problems and, and, and come up with new ways of solving things on a Saturday, and we've even changed the show on a Saturday morning and then performed it Saturday night, which really keeps them on their toes. Then they have to concentrate a lot. <laughs> some of them aren't used to thinking. That's, that's a new, new ball game for a few of them there. And some of them just haven't even started thinking yet. I'm waiting on them. <laughs> we'll find out if they'll do it before the year's up. Just keeping the band focused on the field and just, you know, getting out of them what the crowd is wanting to see. I like being up in the stands just because you feel like you're more of a part of what's going on that day or not. where the band should be, I, I think. I, it's been, it's like, it's hard to be, it's hard to be into something when you're away from everybody else, you know? It's hard to be a part of, like, the whole football atmosphere or whatever, because you're just away from everybody else. All you have to worry about when you're down there on the end zone is whether or not a football's gonna hit you in the head when they kick the extra point, so. I prefer night games just because I like to be under the lights and uh, there's just something about playing under the lights in a band that you know is different from the sunshine the natural light around you it's it's more glittery it's more glitzy because of the reflection of the lights off the horns it makes it more spectacular I think better and uh, just I think overall the drum line plays, plays better uh, when it's kind of cool. I, I enjoy playing during the in, during the day. I, I played night games all through high school. Never played during the day except at marching contests. And I, I really I really like playing during the day because it's you got the sun shining and it's real pretty out. And uh, I like like working up a sweat during the show. I feel like I've done something. When it's cool, you just kind of eh, don't feel like you've done very much. Uh, 
uh, you can see the game a lot better. It's a little bit harder for us to get down to the field and everything, but. I prefer day games. Uh, night games gets a little chilly sometimes, and also it depends. Again, it depends on uh, the time of year, and the season. Personally, I prefer the end zone. Uh, just from a logistical standpoint, uh, we can march off the field in that direction and we're right there at our seats. Uh, all of our percussion equipment that we use, we can bring in and set it up right behind us or in front of us. It allows our pit players to participate in the stands team. And most importantly, it allows us to face our horns, turn our horns back at the audience and play at them. And for that reason, I think it's a lot better for us to be down there. Traditionally, of course, the band sits in the stands. <laughs> but the horns are so directional that everybody, those 14 people on the other side of the stands can hear the band real well. But all we hear on our side is the echo. The, the crowd seems to like it. Uh, it's not that big a problem uh, for us. It's harder to get up into the stands. The students in the band can see the ball game a lot better. And, and this year I think they're, they're really enjoying that. But I'll give them a couple of years and they'll, uh, they'll be ready to go sit in the end zone again. When in Rome, wear a toga. That's what I see. Homecoming. It was, oh God, it was cold and it was really busy from early in the morning till just the end of that night. It was just something every, you know, like every 30 really minutes. Windy, yes, it was windy and we, I, that was probably our worst show because we had a lot of drops.
that was, you know, that's something that they've been working on for years to have a color guard feature because they have majorette, they have linette, they have percussion, and then we're out there and nobody says anything. So that was memorable to me. It was Brick House. So that was fun, learning it and everything. Next, the UNA Color Guard performs to the Commodore's tune, Brick House. During the summer, a lot that nobody in the band really realizes. We have practices like every Saturday. And it's kind of hard because all these girls are from different high schools. Like we have girls from Birmingham and Tennessee that have to drive up every Saturday. And we have all the routines down before band camp. We get a tape of the music. So basically that and just pretty much from there, everything else that the band does. Section leaders, are, if, if, if not for them, we wouldn't uh, have a band. They, they really are very important. And some of them are just really fine players too. They really can, can play on a high level. Uh, we basically run sectionals. Um, we pass everybody off on their music and everything and just basically try to keep the section uh, playing musically. And, uh... Like we have, uh, like I'm the authority, like if something goes wrong, you know, they can, Mr. Jones can come to me and it can be fixed. Uh, rehearsing the section on our sectionals, uh, just make sure everybody's got everything, you know, so Mr. Jones don't have to worry about all, all the other people, you know, he can just come to me and I make sure that they've got all their uniform parts and all the other stuff. So just, just a leadership position and all I try to do uh, is just when I'm like in band rehearsal or something, I just try to act like you're supposed to act. So maybe people can watch me and you know that's how it's supposed to be done and maybe they'll get their act together. And This is my third year here. Uh, I'm the tenor section leader and I don't know why on that either. Um. <laughs> My job is to get the front ensemble to play like they're supposed to play <laughs> and uh, just keep everything in, in line and uh, keep them on the right track to progress to have the most perfect show that we can get. Well, we have to teach the music to the students, to the rest of the section and make sure that they can learn and learn music and stuff like that. We have to teach the drill. On the marching drill to them and basically we are the staff because we don't have any graduate assistants or any other assistants to help the band directors so we have to do that kind of thing. That's basically everything just basically anything Mr. Jones or Dr. Jones asks us to do. We're the Aries leaders in the band. Wow uh, I think the show as a whole is great. Um, probably Tommy. Uh, I just I like the melodies of, of the whole the whole song. I like the, the marching uh, grids and everything there. Um, and most definitely the, the percussion feature part of Tommy. We where we come off the sidelines and play Tom. Um, probably the closer because it because of the energy and in the entire show as a whole just had such crowd appeal. You know, it, it was written for the crowd, and I think we really, really pulled it off, you know, to convey that to the crowd. Tommy, it starts off kind of slow and really moves the tempo up. It, um, it features every part of the band all at one time. Um, features the percussion, and it shows how well we can march drill. And 
just really shows off every element of the band and what we've been working really hard toward. Favorite part of the show, like which part of the show really uh, gives me chill bumps? I would think the push and the closer. Um, the band comes down, the drum line comes back, and uh, the whole melody that the uh, that the horns are playing, I think it just it gives me chills, gets the crowd on their feet, and really loud. So, that's what I like. I kind of like the big push at the very end uh, on Tommy, and you know all the percussion stuff is a real crowd pleaser. I have to say the favorite part of the show is the beginning, right when you just come on with like the cymbals and the tom drums just going at it. That's been my favorite part. My favorite part of the show is probably the opener. I think it's a, a very tasteful opener. Yeah. Probably the opener. I like the opener. Yeah. Uh, Brick House because it features it features my section along with the color guard, but it's got a it's got a real cool tuba line. It's my favorite part of this year's show is probably the closer. I think I like the opener. Mm -hmm. But there's something about the closer because it just pulls everything together, all the sections, and watching the visual work of the flag. And that's, that's pretty cool. I think actually the best part of the show would have been Brazil. As much movement and as much color and show we do, I think that was our best thing for this year. Mm. Tell me. Yeah. Because it's a little challenging, you know, at the end of the show, you kind of out of breath, you know, you want to quit, but you don't. Well, I would say the opener and the closer, just because we march a lot more, it's more exciting. Um, I like the closer a lot, and it just kind of wraps everything up, that's what we're trying to do. It's a good finish on the show. That's hard to say. Um... I was real pleased with the opener. It turned out better than I expected. Uh, a little smoother than I expected and had a big, bigger impact on the crowds. Uh, Boogie Down has always been a favorite of mine. That's our majorette feature. Uh, always been a really good tune. And the band got to where they really played that very tightly, very clean, which you really don't hear much in bands, whether they're college or high school or even professional bands. Uh, they don't play that tight and that clean. And, and by October, our band got to where they were really, really tacking that tune really well. And then Brick House, of course, was a crowd favorite all year. And that was that was stepping out the most for our band, playing something that's in the soul genre. Uh, we don't do that often, although it's been done here before. The kids had a good time with that tune. And that, that conveys to the audience. You can tell when the band's enjoying what they're doing. Uh, I like that one for that reason. Um, I got the music in me. Another one that... Uh, that I think is just a super tune that you, I've never heard it done on the field. So I was really glad that was a success. Uh, a lot of people asked us about that song, told us they'd never heard it since the early 70s when uh, Kiki D and Elton John were on tour. They hadn't heard it since then. But uh, and the version we used was actually done by Thelma Houston, who is Whitney Houston's aunt. Uh, she had some pop tunes out in the 70s and really is an R&B and kind of a jazz singer. And then Tommy, uh, was something I spliced together, uh, and we used that from an old drum corps show. Audience really enjoyed that. Uh, we built all the drum racks ourselves and used old drums and, uh, and cut them and, and remounted hardware all over them. And, uh, and uh, from, the, from the stands, they just look terrific, but if you get right up close on them, you can tell that they're all different drums. They've all got different heads on them. They've all got different hardware on them. Uh, you know, it's like we took chewing gum and just stuck them all together and, and made it all work. That's just the resources we had to work with. But uh, that's what we wanted to do, so we found a way to do it, and uh, the audience has really enjoyed that. Uh, uh, so someone just yesterday, who has nothing to do with the band world, uh, came up to me and told me that her favorite part of the show was when the band members start switching places right near the end, uh, which we call the meat grinder drill, because if, if somebody forgets their spot, they're pretty well ground up. Um, we spent a few days just trying to figure out just how we want to do that. And it ended up being real successful. Adds a lot of excitement on the end. Because uh, every day I'm just looking for somebody to fall down and, and watch them get stepped on. Uh, and it hadn't happened yet, that's what I'm amazed at. It happened one time in a show, but it was somebody on the back line, and so there wasn't anybody there to step on them. So, but there's always next week. You know, we could have a, a mishap. If it rains, we'll be sure and do that part of the show. 
Somebody's gonna crash and burn eventually on that. And I hope your camera's there to catch them when it happens. That'd be perfect. <laughs>
thank you for your outstanding support of our audience. You're a terrific audience for which to play, and every single band member is much appreciated. And now, the show concludes with music from the rock opera Tom. Your attention is directed to Trumpeter Robert Scott.
to see it continue and uh, just you know Mr. Jones is trying to you know continue the traditions that Dr. Jones has had and I just hope to see it continue and keep growing and keep keep up the reputation that it has right now of being one of the best marching bands in the southeast. They take this band to the next level you know which is you know performance that at they do so many performances and I have to hope that the school recognizes that and gives them their due. That's what I hope for next year's band. I hope everything it, next year just is good as it, it always has. And I think every year that uh, it gets better. So I'm just, so next year they'll have something better. If they're still here, I hope Mr. John is still here. So another great show is what will happen next year. I know it will. I basically hope that it just keeps going in the same direction that it's going now. Um, they've always had a good band here. Uh, and I think, I think it's been improving and I think it's just going to get better. They really like family here. 
they can continue and grow and just become and still be one of the best bands in the southeast. I hope that the band, uh, of course, you know, keeps doing what it's doing, and uh, I think maybe from the way it's looking right now, the low brass section in particular will be a lot stronger. Uh, this year we had a really good section, but uh, and we had, you know, I think six guys who played saxophone playing baritone, and they did they did a wonderful job. But maybe if we can just get some more, you know, some some more low brass in there, you know, get the get that whole thing going, you know, we might really really do something. That, I hope they keep striving for the best show possible. Uh, Mr. Jones is doing a wonderful job this year, first year in charge, so first year uh, with the title, so he's doing wonderful. I believe the next year will be even better. I hope that it keeps uh, progressing as doing uh, trend-setting shows. I hope Mr. Jones gets to, gets to stay around here for a long time and keep building the band program up to be the pinnacle of college marching band, which I, in my opinion it already is, especially in the southeast. But I'm, I'm hoping in the next few years it'll be the pinnacle of marching bands all over the country. The sense of belonging to something that is as close to perfection as I've seen in a musical organization of, of this caliber, on this level, on the collegiate level, because I mean, you know, you watch all these other college bands and you're like, what are they doing? And, you know, there's, what they're doing is so simple and so downscaled compared to what we do here at UNA. I mean, it's, it's unimaginable to accomplish what we accomplish here with the amount of time and the resources that we have through just hard work and persevering through everything we come up against. Hope they grow. Mm -hmm. Hope that Mr. Jones is still here. He's probably about the best thing for this department, well, the marching band. I hope they have a, a lot better uh, recruitment. Well, it depends. A lot of times we'll have a lot of girls come back from the previous year, and it's not so hard then, but both of us started this year with pretty much new lines. Knowing that I'm part of the best, you know what I mean? There's a lot of bands in the South, and I do believe with all my heart that this is the best band. Next year's band, I hope uh, they pretty much got a good trumpet section left, uh, and the rest of the sections are going to do just as fine, too. Um, we'll have a good show next year. I'm going to try to come back and catch it every now and then, see how they're doing. Big success, and, and, and we're not finished yet. It was a busy year. Uh, we performed in front of over 160 high school bands. Uh, hundreds of, of thousands of people. We performed in front of hundreds of thousands, literally. Uh, many times we would play a ball game at UNA, leave and go to a, an exhibition and play in front of two or three times as many people at the exhibition, uh, which is great for these band members. I'm glad that they can play for audiences that will really appreciate what they're doing. Uh, had, a, had a gentleman today, a, a high school band director, came by the office and just to say thanks for adhering to standards and having standards and making the band play clean and of course I just turned around and said well it's the students they're the ones you need to thank so he went out in the band room and started thanking students anyway, that's our goal is to make it better every year and, uh, and I think they've done that in more ways than one this year uh, my name is Keith Anderson uh, my name is Michael Brad yes. My name is Jennifer Doty. Um, my name is Wesley French. Okay, uh, Patrick Glenn Harper. Uh, my name is Ian Hartfall. Uh, my name is Philip Oliver. My name is Amy Phillips. My name is uh, Tim French. Hi, I'm Jeremy Fixian. Hi, I'm Jason Warnix. I'm Kelly Posey. I'm Kim Russell. My name is Anthony Joyner. My name is Amanda Holloway. Okay, my name is Elena Cable. Hi, I'm Jackie Smith. Hi, my name is Gray Stamp. Uh, Robbie Stout. Lloyd Jones, and Director of Bands at the University of North Alabama.
two service groups, Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma, we couldn't run without them. Uh, they do everything from bringing us drinks, they bring water to all the rehearsals. Uh, they do a lot of things behind the scenes, raise money, buy instruments, repair instruments. Uh, they take care of a lot of stuff for the new members, transfers and freshmen. They take that on as a responsibility, uh, making sure those kids uh, either get in their dorms or they get settled in an apartment or if they live around here, just that they know some people in the band and have some contact. Those two groups are very important to the band, Cap Cap Psi and Tau Beta Sigma. And, uh, I was fortunate enough to be a charter member here of Cap Cap Psi. And, uh, the, the group that they have now, the group of guys, is exceptional and uh, have really developed the fraternity into something special. Really a, a big asset. And I just got it initiated as an honorary member of Tau Beta Sigma last year, and so now I'm a Mr. Sister. <laughs>